Hello, algebra students. Today we're going to go over the second tutorial in the algebra, first unit of Algebra 1. Um, <clears throat> this tutorial is on linear equations. And as it suggests, linear means lines are involved. Or in other words, um, we're going to learn more about it, but basically these equations would form a line when you graph them. This will go over in all detail and equations. So it's going to have equals in them. So linear equations, and we're going to learn a lot about linear equations over the next few tutorials. So if you're not understanding every single thing right now, don't worry about it. It'll all make sense as we continue to go on through this unit and in future units. Okay, so don't be alarmed or intimidated. But if you meet me here on page five of the tutorial, we're going to go, the, I'll go over this first warm-up question, okay? So Jasmine knows that the area of a rectangle is the product of its base and height. Help her write an expression that represents the area of this rectangle, and then use the expression to find the area when b equals 10. So we know that to find the area of the rectangle, it's length times width, or in other words, um, base times height. So we, we can see here, this rectangle has a height of eight and it's base, this just says B, but we know B is 10. So the expression that represents the area is eight times B, which is just eight B, and then B equals 10. So this would be eight times B becomes eight times 10, which is 80, okay? Hopefully that sort of made sense. Um, and remember, Whenever you have, like in that case, we had 8B with the 8 right next against, right up against the B. Remember that when you have a number right up against a variable like that, that that means that those two things are multiplied. Okay. Now we're just going to go ahead and skip ahead all the way to page 12, and it should stop you automatically. It says the quotient of a number and negative 5 result in 2. What is the number? So a couple of things here. Notice it says the quotient. That means we're going to be dividing. So quotient means you're dividing. So I'm going to write like a fraction bar. It says the quotient of a number. Notice it says a number. Whenever you see a number or it says like some number or a number, but it doesn't actually give you the number itself, that's going to be a variable. Okay. So we're going to use the letter N in this case. So we go into quotient of a number and negative five. So we're dividing n, some number or a number, divided by negative five. And it says the result is two. So the result, or in other words, equals two, okay? So whenever you see the word quotient, just know that we're gonna be dividing. So it's gonna be the quotient of what? The quotient of a number and negative five in this case, a number and negative five. Now our goal is to figure out what n is. So how do I get n by itself? One of the key things we're gonna learn throughout algebra, and hopefully you know this from previous math classes, like in middle school or whatever, that see how this says n divided by negative five? You wanna use the inverse operation to cancel things. So in this case, we're dividing by negative five. So what would be the inverse operation to get rid of it? What? So the opposite of dividing is multiply. So we're going to multiply by negative five. Multiplying by negative five and then dividing by negative five, those cancel. But whatever you do on one side, you have to do on the other. So on the left side, we divided by or multiplied by negative five. So that means on the right side, we have to multiply by negative five as well. That gives us that n equals two times negative five is negative 10. Okay, so that's negative 10 here. Okay, and we're gonna go over this inverse operation stuff like a lot, a lot, a lot. So again, if it's not 100% making sense right now, that's okay. Just, we'll keep on working these out until they can make 100% complete sense. Okay, and again, I mentioned this in other videos, but if you have a notebook and you write down everything that I write, I guarantee it'll make a lot more sense and I guarantee you'll understand it better. So just write down everything I write and everything should be good. 
So let's go ahead and solve this one here. We're going to fill in these steps, but to the side, I kind of want to do it without this box or any, without thinking about reasons, without, let's not think about that for right now, but we'll get to that. Let's just look at our equation. We have 6x minus 9 equals 45. Now, my goal is to get x by itself. So my goal is it for the equation to just say x equals, and then just a number over here. So this is my goal. I wanted to say x equals, and then a number. So here, when I look at this, do I have x by itself right now? Well, no. On this side of the equal sign, I have a 6x minus 9. So I need to get rid of that 6, and I need to get rid of that minus 9. Now, what should I get rid of first, or does it not matter? Well, it's generally easier if you get rid of whatever's adding or subtracting first. So if something's adding or subtracting, if we get rid of that first, it makes it, um, this is the simplest way to do it. So see how it says minus nine? What would be the inverse operation of minus nine? Well, if we add nine, that makes zero. So negative nine plus nine, that cancels. But of course, whatever you do on one side of the equation, you have to do the exact same thing on the other side of the equation. This is a key thing. If I add nine to one side, you have to add nine to the other side of the equal sign. That leaves us with six X over here on the left because these nines canceled equals 54. See, now we're closer to our goal. Remember our goal is to get X by itself. Now, what would I do to get rid of um, this six? Well, remember six right up against the X like this. Remember, if you have a number, a coefficient right up against a variable, x, so 6 is right up against x, that means they're multiplied. So how do we cancel it? With division. So we divide by 6, both sides of the equation. These 6s cancel, leaving us with x equals 9. Okay. And now we've reached our goal. We know what x is. We, x is 9. And you can see if you went all the way back to the original equation, if you did 6, times nine minus nine, you'd get 45. Okay, so that's how you know it's correct is that if you replace the X with your answer, then it should work out to a true equals, right? A true um, mathematical statement. Okay, so how do we, what do we put in these reasons here? So look at what we did first. We added nine to both sides of the equation. That was our first step, right? And you can see they did the exact same thing. Do you see how they added nine on both sides? They added nine here and added nine here. Well, what reason do we put here? Okay, so if you do the same thing on both sides of the equation, that's gonna be a property of equality. So if we add to both sides, that's gonna be an addition, addition, property of equality. If you subtract on both sides, it's subtraction, property of equality. If you multiply on both sides, it's multiplicative property of equality. So here we're adding nine to both sides of the equation. So the reason here is gonna be the addition property of equality, okay? So we're gonna put addition property of equality right here. Now, what was our next step that we did here? Well, our next step was we simplified, right? We added the, we combined these, and then we added the nine here, right? So right here, we're gonna put simplified, simplification. Okay, so going from step two to step three, you just combine the nine, negative nine and positive nine, those cancel. And then the 45 plus nine, whenever you're just combining like terms, you can put that as simplification. Next, we are dividing by six on both sides, dividing by six on both sides. So whenever you do something on both sides of the equation, that's going to be a property of equality. All right. So we're dividing by six on both sides. So that's going to be a division property of equality. Lastly, the six is canceled. So we're just canceling things and working out what this is. Simplification. again. Okay. So whenever you're just kind of like combining things or canceling things, uh, that's going to just put, you're just going to put simplification here. Okay. Okay, let's move on. 
Okay, so now we have this brief activity. It's only a couple problems, but let's go ahead and go over them. In this activity, you'll create a linear equation to represent a real world situation and then use it to solve a problem. Read the situation and then answer the questions that follow. Celine is Drake's granddaughter. Her age is four years greater than one third of Drake's age. Okay. If Celine is 28 years old, how old is Drake? Okay. Hmm. So we have let D represent Drake's age. Which equation represents this situation? So her age is 28, right? So it says her age is, okay? But her age, we already know, is 28. So what we can do here, I'm just going to go ahead and grab this just right here. Her age, well, what is her age? That's 28. So 28 is, usually a lot of, time, a lot of times when you see is, that's going to that's gonna be where you put your equals, okay? So here, her age is, so 28 is, so 28 equals, okay? So when you're writing from basically changing from <clears throat> some words to mathematical statement, um, the word is is oftentimes going to be used, uh, that's going to be where your equals is, is or are, right? Okay, four years greater than, so four years more than okay. one third of Drake's age. Drake's age is D, we're saying, right? Drake, the D represent Drake's age. So this is our equation. 28 equals four plus one third D. <clears throat> right here. Okay. Here they put the 28 on the right side of the equation. That doesn't matter, okay? Now we need to solve this equation in part A to find Drake's age. So we need to solve this equation. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab it here. Okay, so I wanna solve, I'm using, doing this equation here. Okay, so one third D, so one third times D plus four equals 28. Okay, so, here I can, I usually get rid of whatever's adding or subtracting. So I'm going to get rid of this, my, this plus four by doing a minus four. Plus four and minus four gives you zero. Those cancel. Here, when we do the minus four on the right side, that gives us 24. Looking here, the fours cancel, leaving us with one third D. I want you to notice that we subtracted four on both sides of the equation. Remember, whatever you do on one side, you have to do on the other. In this case, this is subtraction property of equality. Okay, so whenever you do something on both sides, that's a property of equality. In this case, we subtracted, so that's subtraction property of equality. The main thing I want you to get is whatever we do to one side, we do to the other. Okay, and in order to get rid of addition, we use subtraction. All right, now notice this says one third D. Another way to think of this is as D divided by three. So here I have divided by three. How do I cancel it? I multiply by three. And I have to multiply whatever I do to one side, I have to do it to the other. So that gives us that D equals 24 times three. Uh, that's 72. And there you go. Drake's age is 72. He's almost as old as I am. Hope that made sense. Okay. Next, we're gonna go over the uh, practice and then the mastery test. Um, let's go over the practice now. So when you go after the tutorial, you should see, um, the practice and your first question. And I'm gonna go over every question that's in the practice, okay? And we're just going to get some practice. So 
drag it. And again, write down everything I write and everything I tell you to write, write that down too. Okay, solve the equations for the given variable, then place the equations in the table under the correct solution. So basically we wanna see which of these equal three and which of them X does not equal three. So let's try this first one. So this first one is X minus five equals negative two. So I wanna solve for X. What would I do to solve for X, to get X by itself? Well, here I would add five to both sides of the equation, okay, using the addition property of equality. Negative two plus five is three. So this first one, we want to put this first one, maybe I'll do this. This first one goes into the x does equal three here. Okay. Let's go ahead and do this next one. So this next one, here it's a negative 14 times x equals negative 42. So here they're multiplied. So how do I cancel? With division. So I'm going to divide by negative 14, divide by negative 14. This gives us x equals 42 divided by 14 gives us x equals 3. And yes, it's positive 3 because a negative divided by a negative is positive. So this one, you'll click and drag, and this one goes into x equals three as well. Let's go over this next one here. So here it says x divided by four. So how do I cancel out divided by four? I'm gonna use the multiplication property of equality by multiplying by four on both sides. Multiplying by four. So that gives us x equals, now how do I do six over eight times four? Well, whenever you're multiplying a fraction times a whole number, just multiply the top times four, then divide by eight. So multiply the numerator, in this case six, multiply the numerator times the number, then divide by the denominator. So six times four, that's 24, and then divide by eight. That gives us three as well. So this one, you're gonna click and drag and it goes into X equals three. Let's try the next one. Here we have negative six plus X equals negative nine. How do I get rid of negative six? Well, I add six, okay? That makes zero, that cancels. On the right side of the equation, I have to do the same. Whatever I do on one side, I have to do the exact same thing on the other side giving us x is negative three. So this one goes into the x is not three. X is not three here. Okay. For this next one, to get rid of this negative three fifths, we add three fifths. And then you add three fifths here. This gives you x equals 12 fifths plus three fifths well, if they have the same denominator, which they do, you just add the numerators. So that's 15 fifths. 15 divided by five, remember a fraction is just division, 15 divided by five is three. So yes, X equals three here. So this one goes into this. Okay, last one. This one says X divided by three. So how do we cancel out divide by three? Well, we multiply by three to cancel it using the multiplicative property of equality. X equals 27 in this case. So this one goes into X is not three. Okay, so that was kind of a long one. Oh, look, there's my face. Double. Okay, so that was kind of a long one. Let's go on the next one. Create and solve a linear equation that represents the model where circles and squares are shown evenly balanced on a balanced beam. Okay, so think of the, what we wanna do here is, um, 
think of the uh, oh, I see. Okay, so the square is going to be our x. So the square is going to be our x. And each circle counts as a one. So these are all ones. And these are all ones over here too. So on this side, on this side of the balance beam, we have x plus how many? Plus five equals how many are over here? Seven. So that's this one. X plus five equals seven. And you, it says here x equals two. Yeah, we see that's true, right? Two plus five is seven. So we know x is two. Question three. Last year, the school library had a total of X books. Over the summer, the library acquired another 46 books and now has a total of 1,191 books. Which equation could you use to find X, the number of books the library had last year? So for this one, you would, last year they acquired X books. So they have X books plus they acquired another 46. So they had X books already, plus they acquired or added another 46. Now their total is 1,191 books. I hope that makes sense, right? You take however many books they had originally, plus the 46 additional ones they acquired, that gives you their new total. Here, let's solve for x. Here, let's solve for x. I guess, I don't know why I'm doing the snipping tool here. Here, let's solve for x. So first thing I want to do to solve for x, I'm going to add 9 both sides. So I've got 3x minus 9 equals negative 33. First thing I'm going to do is add 9 both sides of the equation. So to cancel out minus 9, you use add 9 and you add nine here as well. I wanna remind you, you can use the calculator as much as you want, so don't feel like you can't use it, use the calculator, okay? If I add these together, that gives me um, negative 24. You have more negatives. Negatives and positives cancel each other, so you basically are subtracting here. And you take the sign of whatever you have more of. So in this case, we have more negatives. So that's why it's negative 24. Divide both sides by 3 to get x by itself, giving us that x equals a negative divided by a positive is negative. So this is negative 8. OK, this one has decimals. That's OK. It's no big deal. OK, same thing. What would we do first to help us solve for x? Well, I hope you can see that we would add 0 0.2 to both sides of the equation using the addition property of equality. What is the value for x that makes this statement true? So we're solving for x. What would be my first step? Well, I hope you can see that the first step would be to subtract four on both sides of the equation, giving us three over four X equals, these four cancel, seven minus four is three. Okay. Now I need to get rid of this three fourths. I need to get rid of this three fourths to help us get X by itself. Well, one kind of trick you can use here is, and it's not really a trick, but you can use the uh, multiplication property of equality to cancel out the denominator. So that cancels out your denominator. Over here, you multiply by the same thing because it's the property of equality. Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. So multiplying by four to cancel out the denominator gives us that three X, now we just have three X here, equals three times four, which is 12. Lastly, to get um, x by itself, we're going to divide by 3 using the division property of equality. Simplifying gives us that x equals 4. 
Okay, next one. Next one has a lot of words. Clarissa's sister makes weekly installment payments for a motorized scooter she purchased from a friend. She purchased the motorized scooter for $600. So that's the price, total price. And is paying $18.75 a week to her friend until it's paid off. Clarissa's sister wants to know when she has $150 left to pay for the motorized scooter. Select the equation and solution for the number of months X it takes to have $150 left to pay. Hmm. Okay, well, she's paying $18.75 every week. So $18.75 times however many weeks it's going to take. Okay. Now, the original price was $600, right? So let's see which of these makes the most sense. Since she's paying off her debt, they want to put it as negative. I think that's what they're looking at. Uh, plus her original amount of debt is 600 because that's the original amount she owes. That's the price of the scooter. We want to know when will she have $150 left to owe. Okay. So that's this one. And if you solve for X here, you should get 24. You would subtract 600, subtract 600, then divide by 18, negative 18.75, divide by negative 18.75. Okay, given the equation, has been solved in the table. Okay, select the correct answer. Drop down menu. Okay, so our goal here is to solve for X. So what would be my first step? Well, I hope you can see that we would add six to both sides and they did that correctly. Okay, they added six to both sides. Right, add six, add six. Okay, here the six is canceled, that's good. Here negative nine plus six is negative three, so that's good. What would you do next? Um, here they multiplied by the reciprocal. That's another thing you could do with fractions is just multiply by the reciprocal. See how this would cancel everything? But of course, if I multiply this side by four over three, what do I have to do over here? You need to multiply by four over three, wouldn't you? Okay, you see they didn't do that. Here they multiplied by four over three, but here they multiplied by negative, uh, or sorry, oh no, they did do that. They multiplied by four over three. Here. Okay. These cancel, okay, this gives you negative four. Okay, good, everything makes sense. In step two, the blank property of equality was applied. So in step two, they added six to both sides. So that's the addition property of equality. Addition would go here. And then in step four, which property did they use? Well, they multiplied both sides by four over three. You see that? They multiply by four over three, multiply by four over three. So that's the multiplicative property of equality. Okay. Let's go ahead and solve for X here. What would be my first step? Well, I hope you can see my first step would be to add seven to both sides of the equation to cancel this seven. That gives us X over six equals Negative four plus seven is three. Uh, after that, how do we get, this says X divided by six. So how do we cancel out dividing by six? Well, I hope you know that that's multiplying by six. And whatever we do on one side, you have to do the exact same thing on the other side. That gives us that X is 18. And you could always check your answer. If you go back to the original equation, you could always check your answer because check this out. If X is 18, then that means I could do 18 
divided by six. Again, I'm just replacing X with its value. So 18 divided by six minus seven, and that should give you negative four. And indeed it does, right? 18 divided by six is three. Three minus seven is negative four. So you know that it's true because you know that this is true because when we plug it in, it works out. Okay. Uh, show them the table. Okay. Riley solved this equation. Show them the table. Okay, great. Which statement is true? All right. Here she made a mistake, maybe. So is there a mistake or did she do it correctly? That's what we need to figure out. So let's see. What would be my first step here? Well, I think I would subtract four both sides of the equation. Uh, Riley did that. Yeah. Subtract four both sides of the equation. That's good. Um, these cancel. That's good. Three minus four is negative one. So that's good. What would be my next step? I would divide both sides by negative two. That's what I would do next. Divide both sides by negative two. Well, Riley did not do that. You see she divided both sides by positive two. Okay, so that's where she made a mistake. So step four, she made a mistake. Okay, now we're gonna go over the mastery test. Um, you're only gonna have five questions on the mastery test and you need to get four correct. Um, I'm, now, if you retake the mastery test, you're gonna be offered different questions. So I'm gonna go over um, every question that you might be offered. So some, a lot of, most of these questions, you're not gonna see them on the mastery test, but you're gonna see, um, I'm going to cover every question that you're gonna see, but just a bunch of additional questions as well. If you wanna follow along and do every single one of these questions, there's 20 of them, I guarantee it'll make, uh, it'll make understanding a lot better. Um, and I'm not gonna go over every single mastery test question. I might just give you a hint on some of them or give you half the answer and you have to finish it, okay? But if you've been paying attention uh, as, we, as we've been doing this, then you probably won't have too hard of a time. So let's go ahead and get started. You might be offered these, these questions. You're gonna be offered some of these questions, but um, I'm gonna go over every single one, so. A school administrator brought six desk seat uh, desk sets. Each set consists of one table and one chair. He paid $48.50 for each chair. He paid a total of $663 for the six sets. The cost of the table is. Okay. So he bought six sets. So six times the price of the set. The price of the set is the price of the table, which we don't know. I'm gonna put the price of the table as X plus the price of the chair, so 48.5. And the total price was 663, okay? So now my goal here is to solve for X. What I could do here is distribute the six. So six times X is six X plus six times 48.5 is 291 equals 663, okay? Whenever you have a number in front of a parentheses like that, that means this number gets to multiply by every term in the parentheses, okay? That's called distributing. Okay, go ahead and try to solve it from there. I think you'd, you'd subtract 291 both sides and then so on. Okay, next one. Cheryl has a basket of ripe apples and peaches. The number of apples in the basket is 12 more than twice the number of peaches. If there are 36 apples in the basket, there are blank peaches in the basket. So see how it says the number of apples in the basket is, so the number of apples in the basket, that's 36, is, 12 more than, 12 more than twice the number of peaches, twice the number of peaches, okay? I'm gonna rearrange this a bit and I'm gonna call it 2X plus 12 equals 36. So just switching the position of these, um, of what's on what side of the equal sign. 
All right, then go ahead and solve it from there. So the first step would be subtract 12 on both sides and then go from there. Okay. Um, this next one. In step two, they used which property? In step four, they used which property? So in step two, notice they added to both sides of the equation. In step four, notice they divided by three on both sides of the equation. Okay, so see if you can answer those. Same idea here. Um, what property was used. So here they're subtracting five on both sides of the equation. So which property is that? Here they're multiplying by four on both sides of the equation. So which property is that? Okay. Molly has $45 in her wallet, which is, so $45 is three times as much money as her brother's. Three times as much money as her brother. There we go. Easy peasy. Type the correct answer to the box. Okay. What is the value of n that makes this equation true? What I would do first is see how this says two over three n? What I would do is just multiply by the denominator, and that cancels out your denominator. But of course, if I multiply this side by three, I have to multiply the right side also by three. That gives us the equation 2n equals. Negative 12 times 3 is negative 36. Go ahead and solve it from there. Next one. Here we're solving for x once again. What would I do first to solve this equation? Well, hopefully you can see I'd subtract 3 on both sides. See if you could solve it from there. Gregory's age is 5. Gregory's age. Okay, Gregory is 17. So Gregory's age, that's 17, is five years greater than, five years greater than one third of Amanda's age. One third of Amanda's age. Okay. The length of a rectangular park the length of the rectangular park is, and it says here the length is 36. So the length of the rectangular park, 36, is 20 feet longer than, 20 feet plus longer than the width of the park. Now just solve for W. So here I'd subtract 20 both sides of the equation. Okay. A DJ tracks the song requests she receives on a Friday night. She notes that the number of requests for country songs, the number of the number of requests for country songs was so but equals is or are or was. That's going to be where your equals is. Okay. Notice the number of requests for country songs. They also give you that number, don't they? It says there were 18 requests for country, right? So the number of requests for country songs, that is 18, was two more than four thirds times the number of requests for hip hop. Okay. Four thirds X plus two. The perimeter of a rectangle is 42 inches. So we have a, a rectangle and its perimeter is 42 inches. So that means you're adding all, a perimeter means you're adding all the outside distances. It says the width of the rectangle is six inches. So the width is six inches. That means this length, this is six. And also, also over here in a rectangle, that's the same distance there, right? So the width on both sides is the same. What is the length? So I'm going to go ahead and put X for the length. Now, we know the total perimeter is 42. So if we add up all these edges, that's 42. So that's X plus X. 
plus six plus six equals 42. Now we can combine like terms, x plus x is two x plus six plus six is 12 equals 42. Go ahead and solve it from there. You'd subtract 12 on both sides would be your next step. Solve for x, get x by itself. Frederick manages a band and sings lead vocals. The band charges $700 per concert. Frederick receives $175 of that money and he shares the rest equally among the other five members of the band. How much money does each of the five band members receive per concert? So Frederick receives $175. Uh, each of the other five band members, each of them receive a certain amount, an equal amount. And the concert is $700. So here we'd solve for X here. So the first step would be to subtract 175, both sides of the equation. Okay, and then figure out the rest. Okay, so which property of equality was used? Here we're dividing by nine on both sides. Dividing by, nine, dividing by nine on both sides. So which property of equality is that? Which value of N makes the equation true? Here, I would just see how it's one divided by two here, negative one half. Essentially, we could do is multiply by um, negative two and multiply the side by negative two. So I'm using the multiplication property of equality here. This cancels with the denominator. A negative times a negative makes positive now. So that's one N, and these cancel, right? Equals negative eight times negative two is, a negative times negative is positive. And one N, you can divide by one, divide by one, but that doesn't do anything. That just gives us that N is 16, right? So one N is the same as just N. Here, solve for y. What would be my first step here? What do you think my first step would be here? Well, you'd add nine both sides of the equation. Addition, property of quality. Okay. Then go solve the rest from there. Julie ran a race two minutes faster than Terry did. Julie ran the race in 28 minutes. So Julie ran the race in 28 minutes, which was two minutes faster than Terry. Okay. Hmm. Which equation can be used to find the number of minutes? M, it took Terry to run the race. So Julie ran the race two minutes faster. So that means Terry took more time actually, right? So if you took Terry's time, and you subtracted two, you'd get um, Julie's time. This is kind of a complicated one, but if you think about Julie, uh, Julie is faster by two minutes, right? So if it took her 28 minutes, right? Julie took 28 minutes and that was faster than Terry, right? By two minutes. That means Terry must have taken 30 minutes, right? So, to solve this, you would add two to both sides, but they're not asking you to solve, so. Okay, <clears throat> oh, here's an easy one. What do I do to get X by itself? Subtract seven, subtract seven, and then find the answer. The sum of two numbers is negative 18. The first number is 10. Okay, so we, Add the sum means you're adding together. So whenever you see sum, that means we're adding two things together. So the sum of two numbers is 18. So we're adding two numbers together. The first number is 10. So 10 plus the other number and their sum is negative 18. Okay. 
if you solve this, you would subtract 10 on both sides, giving you x equals negative 20. Which property of equality was used to solve this equation? So here they had x minus 5 equals negative 14. I hope you see that we would add to both sides of the equation. And indeed, that's what they did, right? They added 5 to both sides. So which property of equality is that? Jake solved the equation as shown. So we need to find if he made a mistake or not. I can already see the mistake. Hope you can too. How would, looking at this first step, how would I, what would I do first to solve for x? Well, I would subtract seven on both sides of the equation. You see that? But Jake didn't do that. He subtracts a seven on one side, but he neglected to do it on the other side. So that's wrong. Okay, so step two, he made a mistake. Okay, well, I hope that all made sense. I hope you're able to get through it. And um, if you found this useful and you would like to say thank you, then just share it with someone else, either your teacher or a fellow classmate, oh, or you could simply subscribe. Um, I very much appreciate it. Okay, well, with that, take care, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.